Intermediate value theorem, let's read the definition and again, we'll explain what's happening. If y equals f of x is continuous over the closed interval from a to b, then y equals f of x takes on every value between f of a and f of b. Reading that out loud doesn't help you. Thinking about it in different terms or looking at a picture might. All right, so let's do it again. Y is continuous. And so this line that we're drawing here has to be a continuous line. We can't have breaks. Over the closed interval from A to B, so from this point to that point, F of A, or I'm sorry, F of X takes on every value between F of A and F of B. So this is F of A, this is F of B. You have to hit everything in between here. You're going to hit every number in between. So again, in our example, you, when you were born, you were two feet tall. Now you are 18 years old, you are six feet tall. Were you ever five feet tall? Yeah. Were you ever three feet tall? Yeah. Were you ever six? Not probably. It's not probably. It's definitely. You had to. Were you ever six foot one? You could have been. All right. Growth is continuous, but old people get short, right? At 18, maybe you got some brittle bone disease and you started going down a little bit. But you could have been six foot one. We don't know for sure. What we do know for sure is that you were two feet and you were six feet and you were definitely everything in between. You might have had something weird where you went down for a second and then you drank your milk and you got tall again, whatever. Uh, but that's definitely true. So keeping those things in mind are important. Let's look at this graph. F of X is equal to X squared minus four on the interval from negative one to three. On that graph right there, graph this shape. Show me with your arms, what's that shape gonna be? What's that minus four do? It's a parabola, it's down four. Graph that parabola down four on the interval from one to three. All right, here's my graph. In order to talk about intermediate value theorem, you've gotta talk about the endpoints. I can't just say, hey, I was zero, or I, from zero to 18, was I ever seven feet tall? I don't know. I don't know how tall you are now. I don't know anything about you. You need to know some information. You need to know how tall you are now and how tall you were before. So that's what these things are. Finding f of negative 1. What is f of negative 1 going to be for us here? Negative 3. That's this line right here. That dot is at negative 3. f of 3, I get up to 5. So intermediate value theorem. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Will f of c according to intermediate value theorem, ever be equal to 1.5 between negative 1 and 3? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah, you're going to hit it right here if you drew a horizontal line at 1.5. Oh, yeah, you intersect it right there. So is that true? Yeah, it's guaranteed that that is true. Will f of c ever equal to 4.8? Thumbs down, thumbs up. f of c ever equal to 4.8? Yeah. That's guaranteed. Here's 4.8 right here. 4.8. That one's good. Negative 3.5. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Are you guaranteed that you're going to hit negative 3.5? The answer is no. The answer is no. According to this a graph, yeah, we hit negative 3.5. But what's the problem with saying negative 3.5? It's not in between the two things that we know, okay? You're getting extra information when we have that graph, but intermediate value theorem only guarantees the values in between my starting point and my ending point. That's my starting point. That's my ending point. I am definitely going to hit every y value between negative 3 and 5. I'm going to hit everything in between these two numbers. Anything outside of those two numbers, I could hit, but I don't have to. Everybody clear with what's happening there? With this, you need to be very clear in what you state. On the free response portions on the AP exam, it's very important that you talk about very specific things. All right, so this is what we talked about before. There are five things you need to state in order to talk about, uh, in order to talk about intermediate value theorem. The first thing you should do before you do anything else is find where I start and where I end. That's the key to this problem. And so it says use intermediate value theorem to show that f of x 
takes on the value of 9 for some c in between 1 and 2. And so the first thing I got to do is talk about how tall I was when I was born and how tall I am now. Or in other words, what is f of 1 and what is f of 2? Take a second and find f of 1 and f of 2. Show me with your fingers, what is f of 1? f of 1 is 2. Show me with your fingers, what's f of 2? f of 2 is 10. Am I going to hit 9? Yeah, I'm going to, but I have to state stuff correctly. There are five things we need to talk about. The first thing that we need to state, and it's the one that's going to be the most often forgot, is the most important one. You have to state that this thing is continuous. If it's not continuous, like on this last graph, if it wasn't continuous, I could have just had this graph right here. That's not a continuous graph, and I didn't hit anything in between there. But if, as long as it's continuous, there's no other way to get there than to hit everything in between. Is this graph continuous? Is f of x continuous? Yeah. Garrett, how do you know it's continuous? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, he's doing the shape of an x cubed. It's a polynomial. We talked about yesterday that polynomials are continuous. You don't have to get super detailed. You don't have to state why it's continuous. But I need to say, because f of x is continuous, so I'm going to start off by really saying why this is true. Because it's continuous and because I know that 9 falls in between the two endpoints. That's what I'm going to state next. So because f of x is continuous and f of 1 is less than 9 is less than f of 2. I'm saying that 9 falls in between these two values of 2 and 10. You can't state that unless you've already shown what f of 1 and f of 2 are. I wrote that over here. I don't need to talk about it again. But I wrote that down. So those are two things, continuous and that it falls in between. Next thing I need to do is I need to talk about what I'm using. By intermediate value theorem, by IVT. There must be some C. Such that this is weird. Such that, sorry, I wrote this kind of strange. Such that f of c is equal to 9. Basically saying that you have to hit 9. You have to take on 9 at some point. On the interval. From 1 to 2. And you don't need to state the interval. On 1 to 2 is perfectly fine. You don't have to put extra words in there. On 1 to 2. Five things we did. Let's talk about the five things. We talked about continuity. We talked about the interval. And in that, we stated that nine was in between, and we also talked about those numbers over there. We talked about IVT, and we talked about the interval for where it actually takes place. Continuity, we talked about the interval. We talked about our endpoints. We showed that it was in between our endpoints. And we talked about intermediate value theorem. Those five things are the key to being able to state this correctly. Everybody clear with what's happening? Try the next one. Use intermediate value theorem to show that that polynomial function has a zero on the interval from zero to one. And then write your answer. <coughs> Audrey H., what'd you, what'd you do here? What'd you start off by doing? Cool, plugged in zero and plugged in one, I'm guessing, as well. What did you find for f of zero? Cool, and f of one? Two. Wonderful. So she had to state that before we did anything else. We need to know what those values are. I need to know my ending and my starting value. Campbell, what did you do next? Because f of x is continuous. How do you know it's continuous? Yep, it's a polynomial. It's a polynomial function, so if it's a polynomial, it's going to be continuous. What else do you put, Irene? And f of 0 is less than 0 is less than f of 1. 
Cool. We're stating what the value is that we're looking for and that it's actually in between our ending points. Hannah, what else do you get in there? Yep. You got to state what you're using. You can't just come up with this magical thing without t stating what it is. It is IVT. Allison, what'd you put next? Yep. I'm going to make this. Yes, that's perfect. What you said. There must be some C such that F of C is equal to zero on that interval. I'm going to say there must be a zero because it's doing the same thing. There must be a zero on the interval from zero to one. You don't always have to use as many words. I, I kind of wrote it a little bit clunky the first time. I always am just going to restate what they said. There has to be a zero on the interval, so that's what I said. There must be a zero on the interval. Up here, it, I wrote it a little bit more because they stated it funky. I just kind of repeated what they said. Five things. It's continuous. We talked about that zero falls in between the two numbers. We stated what the two numbers were. We talked about intermediate value theorem. And then we also talked about on the x value interval from zero to one. Everybody all right so far? That's easy because it was a mad lib. You just looked at the one before it and you filled in the blanks. All right, not super difficult. Flip it over to the back side. So this is a calculus question. A reminder that when we talk about calculus, we're going to do it in three different ways, or four different ways. We're going to do it graphically. We're going to do it algebraically. And then the other way we can do it is a table. Okay? They gave us some table information, and they're going to talk about uh, this function based on that table. So this looks a little bit funky. Uh, you don't know about f prime and g prime yet. We'll do that next chapter. But right now, we just kind of crossed it out because we didn't need it. The function f and g are differentiable for all real numbers, and g is strictly increasing. The function h is given by that thing right there. Explain why there must be an r for 1 to 3 such that h of r is equal to negative 5. Do that. Look at that problem, talk with your neighbor, and find a way to prove that. In order to do this, I need to state h of 1 and h of 3. This is a little bit weird h of 1. It tells me right here how I can find h. h is equal to that guy right there. f of g of x minus 6. Which equation am I going to start with? g and what am I going to plug in for g? 1. So I'm going to my table. I'm looking at the g line and I'm going to 1. g at 1 is going to get me 2. And then I do what with that? Put it in for f. So f of 2 is 9. 9 minus 6 is 3. I'm subtracting 6 because of that part right there. H of 1 is 3. Show me with your fingers what you find for H of 3. Good. Should be getting negative 7. <coughs> Again, we're going G of 3. So G of 3 is 4. F of 4 is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 6 more is negative 7. Is this function continuous? Yeah. Do you know why? Yeah, you don't know. It's cool. Uh, we don't know yet because we don't know this word. This is why. That right there, that word tells you that it's continuous. Uh, we will describe what that word means next chapter. Um, it is like calling, saying something is differentiable is like calling it a square, okay? And I'm using a, me a metaphor here. It's a square. And so if it's a square, is it a rectangle? Yeah, if you're a square, you're just a fancy type of rectangle, okay? If you're a differentiable, you're a fancy kind of continuous, all right? You are definitely continuous. If you state that you're differentiable, you're just the fancy version. We'll talk about that later on. Now that we know that information, prove it. Tell me in a, in a sentence what the answer is going to be here. All right, let's write a reasoning. Reagan, what do you start off with your reasoning? Okay, cool. So H of R is between negative 3 and 7. That's, that's great. I'm going to write it like this. So H of 3 is less than negative 5 is less than h of 1. And just because I'm writing it different doesn't mean anything's wrong. She wrote, said it perfectly. She said that it's in between those two numbers, and she's not wrong. As long as she stated these over here, 
she's good. I just write it like that because it's easy to write. Notice that which one I put first, which H is three because it's the smaller number. What else do I need to state besides that? Because of that and H of X is continuous. H of, yeah, HX. HR is continuous. HX. HX is continuous. What else do I need there, Lester? Uh, by IVT. We got to state what we're using. By IVT. What else, Drew? Uh, there must be an R such that H of R is equal to negative 5. Cool. Anything else? On the interval. On the interval from 1 to 3. There's my setup. I've got my five things. Continuous IVT, the, vo the values that my thing fell in between them, and then the X interval that I was dealing with. Okay. So what they'll then do is they'll take these and give you in a multiple choice question. Let f be a continuous function on the closed interval from negative 3 to 6. If f of negative 3 is negative 1 and f of 6 is 3, then intermediate value theorem guarantees which of those five. Talk with your neighbor. When in doubt, draw it out. If you don't know what to do, draw a picture of what they gave you and see what you can do with it. Go. So f is continuous from negative three on the interval from negative three to six, I've got my two endpoints. It's continuous. And so I'm going to draw multiple versions of what this graph could look like. Is this continuous? Oh, yeah, it's continuous, though, even though you can't see it. Definitely continuous. All right, that's continuous. Is this continuous? Is this continuous? Wee. All right. There's three options. Using those three options and looking at them will help us better understand this. Is it guaranteed that f of 0 is equal to 0? No, that purple line at 0, it does not touch 0. It's not A. Letter B talks about derivatives. We don't know anything about that. So do you think it's B? No, don't pick B. That's mean value theorem. You don't know about mean value theorem yet. It doesn't work because it's not differentiable. Let's go down to E. f of C equals zero for at least one value between negative one and three. What are these negative one and three representing? Those are X values in this question. Those are X values. You're between negative one and three. Between negative one and three, did I have to cross zero? The red line did. The purple line, or the green line did. The purple line didn't. You don't have to. Why? Because we don't know what's happening at negative 1 and 3. What we know what's happening is at negative 3 and 6. And so E could be true, doesn't have to be true. Letter C says the Y value is going to be stuck between negative 1 and 3 for every single X value between negative 3 and 6. Is that true? No. You're going to hit every value between negative 3 and 6, but I could also hit outside of it. That green graph goes really high and really low. And so it goes beyond negative 3 and 6. So that one is not true. There has to be some y value equal to 1 at least once between negative 3 and 6. The green line does it at 1 right there. The red line does it right there. The purple line does it right there. All three of them do that. It's got to be C. Or got to be whatever one. D. Sorry. Make sense on what's happening there? The apostrophe thing on B, yeah, that means derivative. It means slope. It's a little bit different. Let's do uh, two more. I'm not giving you homework today. This is your homework as you staying with me right here. I'm giving you answers. I'm giving you a uh, situation. Below is Min's attempt to write a formal justification for the fact that the equation g of x is equal to negative 50 has a solution between 12 and 21. Is the justifi justification complete? Why or why not? Talk with your neighbor. Make an answer. Thumbs up if you think it's complete. Thumbs down if you think it's not complete. <coughs> Zach, why do you think something's wrong here? Because what? It doesn't say it's continuous. It gives us these four points. If those four points, if they're just four points, 
you're not going to get negative 50. You have to be continuous, and if you don't stay continuous, then it doesn't work. One more as you're leaving here, as you're packing up. Give me an answer on that one. Is that one complete, yes or no? 